Hey guys, um, I actually haven't done a pregnancy like week to week update in quite a few weeks. So this is gonna be like my six to 10 week update. Um, and I'm not actually too bothered about that to be honest because I think, um, because I'm obviously announcing this when I'm like three months pregnant, I've also got quite a lot of catching up to do anyway in terms of timings, but also I don't wanna overload you guys if I don't have stuff to say, do you know what I mean? Like if every week is the same then there's no point in making kind of weekly videos and they'll still be uploaded weekly. So weeks six to 10, um, the past month I have been feeling pretty sick. Although I haven't actually been sick or felt, I've only ever felt like I'm, I was going to be sick once. And that has me feeling like it is a boy. Like, because apparently when you have girls, I know it's like an old wives tale, but most people I know as well that have a boy and a girl, so they got much thicker with the girl, including my mum and my sister. So I think it's gonna be a boy. Um, but yeah, so I've just been feeling sick. The tiredness has actually been going, to be honest. Like week six and seven, I was still pretty tired, but the past couple of weeks, I've actually been a lot more kind of, I've had a lot more energy. And especially in the mornings, I feel like I'm kind of like, that's kind of going away, but the sickness is still there. It's getting a little bit better now um, in week 10, but yeah, it is still definitely there. <laughs> Um, and in terms of cravings, I've still been eating watermelon, a lot of watermelon. Been really craving taramasalata, not with the watermelon, just with celery, that would be really weird. Ice lollies, but I think that's because it's been so ridiculously hot for the past few weeks. Um, still having issues handling meats, like raw meats, and, um, eating, like, chicken on the bone and stuff, which never used to bother me. So that's quite weird. Um... And then in terms of other updates, I actually had, I've had two scans. So um, Mike and I decided that we wanted to go privately for our scans um, based on a couple of things. I think partly because um, my sister did and she really thought it was worth spending the extra money on um, and also for like peace of mind. So you get more scans and you obviously get an earlier scan as well. So I've had two scans now, um, which if we hadn't gone privately, I wouldn't have had any scans. So um, I had an eight week scan and then a 10 week scan, which actually wasn't intentional. I was supposed to just have the eight week scan and then book in for the harmony test, which I'll explain in a bit more detail in a sec, but it's basically a blood test. But for some reason, the clinic that was doing the harmony test had this offer on where you would save a hundred pounds if you had another scan. Like, they were going to charge me £500 for the harmony test if I didn't have a scan, and £400 if I did have a scan. So I was like, well, I may as well have another scan. So um, both of those scans were really good. Everything was really, like, perfect, normal. Um, my dates are all kind of as I expected. And um, for the harmony test, they took... Sorry if you can hear that Mike's mowing outside. Um, but they took some blood. And if you guys don't know what the harmony test is, it's actually not currently available on the NHS in the UK but it is apparently coming to the NHS next year, but it's a form of genetic screening. So um, it's one of the kind of more accurate but less invasive screens for, or screening methods for Down syndrome, but also a couple of other genetic um, diseases and um, issues as well. But what is exciting is that they can also find out the sex. So Mike and I actually booked in um, for around 13 weeks, we have our appointment to get the results, which to be honest, if the results were negative, they said they were gonna call us, and it's been a week and a bit since then. Um, so, or has it? It's been a week since then. Cause I'm like 11 weeks today, so I'm like looking back on like week 10, so I had it at 10 weeks exactly. Um, and they said they would call us if the results were like high risk for Down syndrome or any of the other um, diseases before our appointment, um, obviously because there was like a three week gap because we're going to LA tomorrow, um, if there was like a high risk result. So hopefully, considering it's been like a week and a bit, that should be fine and um, fingers crossed, but we get to find out the sex, which is super, super exciting because you don't normally find that out till 20 weeks. So um, yeah, I'm really happy overall actually that we decided to go privately for the scans because I think um, for my kind of um, peace of mind, it's been amazing. And also you get to see the baby a lot more um, frequently than you would. So, you know, 
we decided that it was it was kind of worth it in terms of like our finances and whether or not we could afford to kind of pay for that extra little bit um, for our reassurance. I realise that it's not a choice for everybody or um, not something everyone would do, but that's just what we've done. So um, otherwise I knew I'd get questions because obviously you don't normally have a scan till 12 weeks. I'd be like, why have you had a scan? Um, but yeah, so that was really exciting. It was actually really cool as well. The first one I have to say was internal. So it was kind of like same kind of vibe as a smear test, like, but not very nice. So I didn't really like enjoy that one. I have to say um, it was a bit awkward. And quite uncomfortable um, but the second scan was like a trans abdominal one where they put it on your tummy like how you imagine like scans being or like how you see scans being like as you're growing up and that, that at that moment I was really like oh my god actually this like I'm having a baby there's actually something in there and for some reason like because of that the second scan felt so much more real um, yeah, the heartbeat was all fine, and it was growing fine, and Mike came with me, and it was just, yeah, it was really, really awesome. That was exciting. The other thing that I have done since my last update that I haven't updated you guys on is to tell our family. So, a lot of people wait till 12 weeks to tell their families. Um, we waited till eight weeks, so we basically waited to the first scan. So. Um, just so that we could get reassurance that there actually was something there and there was a heartbeat um, and we weren't just imagining it um, so we told my family first and then we told Mike's family and their reactions were just awesome like it was so exciting obviously my sister already knew because um, I had told her earlier because I wanted to ask her about like doctor's appointments and like what to do and things like that um, but that was really really awesome and we've actually told since we had the l the next scan last week we actually told a couple of our friends as well so we're waiting for the kind of 12 week mark to tell um and the 12 week scan to tell kind of everyone like a wider group of friends and youtube um just for reassurance really just in case something goes wrong i know things can go wrong later than that but that's kind of like the the main hurdle i think is the 12 week kind of mark but because we've had those two scans already i do feel like a bit more confident before that i was so so paranoid about everything i was eating everything like you know i was just really paranoid um that there was going to be like nothing there when we went for the scan so i'm sure that's pretty normal as well um i also got a new book this week which is on my bedside table which i've been reading a bit of but i think it's kind of a little bit too far um along the line for me now but it's the baby book by rachel waddy love who is a kind of I don't even know like what you would call it she's not necessarily she's kind of a nurse like not a medical nurse but like a nursery nurse so um she does like private hires basically like you can hire her or very like well-to-do people hire her to help with their baby in the first few weeks so hang on the dog is scratching the door come in squidge there we go so she does like high profile um baby kind of looking after in the first few weeks and like gives you advice on how to look after your baby so she her most famous clients are like Gwyneth Paltrow and Zara Phillips so um anyway so she's updated this book I think it's a fairly old book but she's quite old school in her um kind of outlook she's very much like the baby should have a routine but the routine should revolve around your life which I think is the way at the moment that's the way like I would like to parent i think babies and animals and like everything thrive on routine we all thrive on a routine especially so babies and in terms of like getting them sleeping and everything from all of my friends that have had kids or whatever that's what i have kind of learned um but i really don't want to go down that route of like letting the baby routine kind of change our lives completely obviously having a baby changes your life hugely um but yeah so i'm quite keen and i quite liked her kind of outlook and her philosophy so i've been reading a little bit about it and obviously you know we're like six months away from the point of actually having a baby here but um it's really interesting and it's really useful as well for like shopping lists and things to think of um i'm the kind of person as well that i'll read this and then i'll i'll look back in it and kind of like reference it when i actually come to do any shopping because i haven't bought anything yet like i'm really really paranoid about jinxing the pregnancy and like if you buy stuff you know is it too soon and then what happens if you lose the baby and like all of that horrible thing like everything goes through your mind so I haven't bought anything um but we have like decided on the room to be the nursery and we've got the new carpet in that room as well so I have been kind of like thinking about 
nursery furniture and like what I want it to look like and like I've been looking at buggies. Obviously my brother had a baby, well not obviously, like if you guys don't know, my brother had a baby three weeks ago. Or my brother's wife obviously had the baby but yeah it's his baby as well um so she's three weeks old and I actually went shopping with my sister-in-law this week um and we were like looking at buggies because I feel like at the moment because I haven't announced it I'm like I don't really want to like jinx it by like looking in shops and like, all of that kind of stuff so I went with her and we were like looking at all the buggies and like we had my little niece Willow with us so we're like yeah we've got a legit excuse to shop for baby stuff um and I was looking at them and I, initially I thought I wanted or I thought the one that I liked the look of the most because it's quite expensive was the Bugaboo Buffalo but it was actually super super heavy so um, I'm not sure I'm going to have like when everything's announced and everything I'm going to go and have like a proper try and see like how it breaks down and how heavy it is to lift into the back of car the car and stuff like that um, but yeah so that was fun like going to look at like buggies and cots and stuff um, it's definitely my favourite looking buggy the Bugaboo one um, but yeah, if you guys have any recommendations, if you have kids and you've had a buggy and you know like which one is your favourite and which one you've loved, definitely let me know. In terms of like my weight and how I'm feeling and everything, um, I've definitely put on a few pounds. I think I've probably put on about five pounds, um, which I don't feel great about because like obviously at the moment nobody knows. So it's kind of, I just feel like I've just got a little bit chubbier, which is not a great feeling. But then at the same time, like there's a good reason for it so I'm not too bothered the one thing I would say is that I'm definitely getting like super bloated like some days I feel like I have a proper baby bump and I'm like oh my god this is so exciting then I'm like no it's probably just gas um so yeah I'm kind of like excited for that first time when I like have a little bump and I need to wear like maternity jeans and stuff like I'm actually getting excited for that which I never thought it would be I thought it would be like oh my god no it's crazy how things change when you are pregnant because you just I don't know, it's just so weird your outlook changes. I've got a dog like trying to nest in my bed here. What are you doing? What are you doing in there? You've got a rude awakening coming for you in a few months, doggo. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, so that's probably gonna be it for my kind of six to 10 week update. I don't think I've got anything else to update you guys on. I'll definitely do another update this week because I'm traveling um, and also like, it'd be good to chat about like, I don't know how I feel if, if jet lag affects me because I don't think I can take sleeping pills which I normally really rely on when I have jet lag. Um, so I'll definitely update you from that and then obviously the week after is my 12 weeks which is really exciting and when I'm going to be telling YouTube and the world. I'm like so nervous about that, so so nervous but I'll see you guys very soon, bye!